This video is about skeletal system structures, but to understand why those structures are even there, we have to understand some of the things that the skeletal system does. Because in anatomy, structure and function are very closely related. It's these two things that are working together. We have to know like what the skeletal system needs to do so that we can have the right tools for that job. So some of the skeletal system functions involve a support, a movement like muscle attachment can pull on bones, protection of your soft organs like your brain or heart or lungs, storage of minerals, namely calcium and phosphorus, and then making red blood cells, erythrocytes, from red bone marrow, and then storing fat in yellow bone marrow. So here's uh, what the bone basically looks like. Uh, the epiphysis would be the ends of the bones, so that's C. The diaphysis is the shaft of the bone, that's A. The metaphysis is like in between those two, and uh, that's B. Articular cartilage is the cartilage that's going to help articulate the skeleton. To articulate means to move. So these are going to be uh, in movable joints. So articular cartilage is going to be C. It's going to create a little bit of shock absorber and uh, help that bone move uh, smoothly in the uh, socket. Uh, the spongy bone is uh, the part of the bone that has those little pockets in it. So that would be A is pointing to some spongy bone. The epiphyseal line, we sometimes call that the growth line or growth plate. Um, that's D. And then red bone marrow is in that spongy bone. So that would be uh, the letter B. Compact bone runs along the outside of the shaft of the bone. So in this picture, that would be E. The medullary cavity is C, this kind of space where the uh, yellow bone marrow uh, can be. The yellow bone marrow is A, uh, peri so it's going to store fat. The periosteum is going to be this membrane that goes around the bone. And in that case, that's B, and the blood vessels are D. So there's some of the major parts of the bone. But if you look inside, we're going to find that there are several different types of blood cells. Osteocytes are mature bone cells. Osteoblasts are bone building cells. So think blast and building. Osteoclasts are chompers. They're, um, they go through and dissolve bone. And then osteogenic. So osteo means bone, genic for genesis. These are stem cells. These cells are about to become other cells. So here's an example of uh, kind of how that works. You have the um, osteogenic cells uh, becoming the builders, osteoblasts, which then can uh, develop into the mature bone cells, osteocytes. Osteoclasts, the chompers, they actually come from white blood cells, that same stem cell line. So there you can kind of see what those uh, what those are. If you're looking at bone tissue, typically under a microscope, you'll see something like this. It won't look quite like this, but this is a diagram, not a picture from a microscope. But you can see all the cells and how they're working together. Remember that bone is connective tissue. So all this orange is matrix. There's a space where the bone cells live. That's the lacuna. The osteocyte is in that space. Those um, are making rings. The rings are called lamella. The rings center around a central canal. In that central canal, there's nerves, arteries, veins, blood vessels. Osteocytes are the mature blood cells. Around the outside here, we have the osteoblasts. They're building a new ring. And we have osteoclasts that are dissolving some of that matrix to release calcium and phosphorus for other things like nerves or muscles to use those minerals. When bones grow, they're going to grow in several different ways. Like during development, they grow, they become less cartilaginous, less cartilage, more ossified, more bone. So a baby is going to have a lot of cartilage in their skeleton. A teenager is going to have a significant amount of cartilage in their skeleton. But as you get older, that cartilage will turn to bone. Some bone will also fuse together. So an adult only has 206 bones, whereas a child might have significantly more because 
those bones have not yet fused together. Bone also grows longer. That's how you get taller. Your, bone, your long bones get longer. And bones grow thicker. The more uh, exercise stress you put on them, the more your muscles pull on them, the thicker the bone's going to, to grow in response. So here's an example of how bones grow. The little dots here representing how bone is turning from cartilage into bone. You can also see, though, that the medullary cavity is maintained. Those osteoclasts are maintaining the uh, medullary cavity so that there's always this area for fat storage. If a doctor were to sign your bone, like say you had surgery or something, they were to sign it, and you were to come back and look later, if they signed it in this middle area, would it still be in that same location? And the answer is yes, because bones grow from the, like the epiphysis out. The diaphysis uh, doesn't do much growing. Uh, we're just extending the bone as it gets longer from the epiphysis out. So here you can see some of those layers. Layer A is calcified cartilage. That means it's ossified. It was more cartilage. Now it's bone. B is hypertrophic cartilage. These are mature cartilage cells here. C is proliferating. That means it's dividing. There's getting to be more of it. And then D is the resting cartilage. It's going to anchor the bone. And that's kind of how it grows. So from this blue line, those cells are proliferating, pushing the bone out to be longer. And then they're going to ossify and become bone, and the bone gets longer. While the bone's getting longer, it's also getting thicker. But while it's getting thicker, the osteoclasts are maintaining that medullary cavity. So that ratio uh, is going to stay about the same. Bones remodel. That means that old bone is being replaced with new. So to do that, the osteoclasts are chomping away, removing uh, minerals and a bone matrix, and the osteoblasts are rebuilding. So the reabsorption means that release of calcium and phosphorus. Deposition means you're putting calcium and phosphorus back into your bone so that they can grow. Here's what that looks like. Here's your osteoclast breaking it down, releasing calcium and phosphorus. Here are your osteoblasts rebuilding, getting some calcium and phosphorus. The advantage is you get a new skeleton every once in a while. So it helps your bones heal and stay strong. The disadvantage is as you get older, the osteoclasts start to outpace the builders and your bone becomes more porous and we call that osteoporosis. Here's how bones heal. Whenever there's a break, the first thing that happens is a callus for, or blood clot forms. That's got it. We got to stop the bleeding. There's blood vessels in bone. The next thing that's going to happen is called a callus starts to form. So uh, we're starting to now replace some of that um, blood clot with uh, cartilage and uh, some spongy uh, bone. But eventually then uh, it's going to ossify and uh, heal as a strong bone again. Homeostasis just means maintaining internal conditions. And if bone is living, and it is, because it grows, it has metabolism, it has homeostasis and all these other uh, traits, uh, just like any other living cell, uh, bone cells maintain homeostasis. And sometimes that homeostasis is regulated by hormones. Calcitonin deposits calcium into bone. Parathyroid hormone helps remove uh, calcium from bone. Human growth hormone helps your bones to grow longer, and estrogen stimulates your osteoblasts to build more bone. Also, bone adjusts to stress. So the more exercise, you, especially weight-bearing exercise, the stronger and thicker your bones can become. So to help avoid osteoporosis, weight-bearing exercise can be um, significant. That's all then about bone structures and functions. Thank you for watching.